Good morning, YouTubians. Gary of VW Jawbreaker. Today, we're going to go ahead and go over some of these details of this hot 1915, and I'll explain to you why I call it the hot 1915. first glance it does look like the same 1641 but I can promise you it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not. Also at first glance, see anything different in back? Do ya? Do ya? Where's the dual stingers? It's gone. It ain't gonna work with that inch and five eighths merged header so we put something else on there. So let's get into this uh, Q&A session. Go over some of the details real quick on this hot 1915. All right, guys, here's some of the questions I've been getting and why I'm calling it a hot 1915. Honestly, the reason I'm saying hot 1915 is a, it's a 1915 CC engine. We went from 87 millimeter to 94 millimeter. And we also use the same forged crank and rods, uh, stock stroke crank of 69 millimeters. Do the math. 1915 cc the reason it's hot or i'm calling it hot i should say is not so much due to the fact it's running hot it's running a little lean right now that's why we can't go for a ride it's all about breathing if the engine does not breathe it will not produce power very simple so what i did is i used the cb performance 044 mini wedge port heads now if you go on their website and actually read, they actually flow 120%, 120% more than stock. That's a lot of CFM, that's a lot of flow. You're shoving more down through. I'll show you a picture here of a stock head port versus these CB heads. So along with those heads, I had to get big beef intakes because when you went to put the end casting on the head there was actually a small gap in between the end casting and still seeing the port they're huge i'm telling you i can molest a hard-boiled egg in those intake ports they're that big okay a little overkill you get my drift now we ended up ditching the weber 40 idfs i had and went with 44 IDFs with 36 millimeter Venturis. So what we're doing is we're shoving so much more air into that engine and then getting it out through a better merged exhaust. So again, the better your engine breathes, the better it's gonna perform. Now, just like anything, you need to actually match your cam to the heads. So you wouldn't wanna just go out there and throw in some whatever cam without doing the research. So with that head that I have, I ended up having to go with the Engel FK8 cam. That FK8 requires 1.4 or 1.5 ratio rockers. The difference in that is simply 1.1 to one, and then further over. It's all on the pivot. So as you can see, they kind of look the same, but the adjuster gets moved back to the other side and that center point is moved over more as well. So you have a larger ratio. So that rocker is actually doing more of the work than the cam is. A stock cam gives you about 225 thousandths. Almost. Yeah. Almost a quarter inch of travel, if you will, on that valve. The C35 cam that I was running and the 1641 gives me 420 thousandths with the stock 1.1 to 1 ratio rockers. The FK8 cam with the 1.4 ratio rockers. Light went off. So the FK8 cam with the 1.4 to 1 ratio rockers, I actually measured 538 thousandths of lift. That's a lot of lift. So what we're talking about is opening the valve this far and opening the valve that far. On bigger valves, bigger ports. Yes, a lot more airflow. Which in turn is gonna make that car run. The other thing 
is when people ask me about compression ratio. Compression ratio really is dictated more or less by the cam. The cam manufacturer is going to tell you, hey, you need to run it between here and here. That's where it needs to be. Pretty simple. So figure out your engine, pick out your heads, then go ahead and pick out your cam to go along with the heads, and then dial in your compression ratio according to what the cam manufacturer recommends. The FK8 cam says it runs best between 9 and 9.5 to 1 compression. I lucked out right at 8.9. You know what? Good enough for me. The higher compression you go, the harder it is on the engine a little bit. Also, the more heat you, that you create from the combustion, the higher octane gas you need to buy. It can be a snowball effect. I'll be honest with you, this whole engine's been a snowball effect. So one of the other things that I did is I went ahead and installed a electric fuel pump, a rotary fuel pump, up front underneath the fuel tank. Um, that freed up some space in the back. I actually need to run a breather set up in the back on the engine just to help the engine breathe a little bit. I'm getting just a smidge bit of oiling, misting, coming from the pulley. I got a good size oil pump in there, everything's tight, the main bearings are tight, everything's nice and tight. I know it's not an issue with the engine. It's just brand new, it only has about 20, 25 miles on it, because... Been waiting on parts and life and work and kids and you know how it goes. Not to mention, it's the holiday season, so there are family things to do. Not everything revolves around the Volkswagen. It's a dirty little secret, nobody likes to say it, but there, I said it. It does not revolve around Volkswagens. I'll probably get struck by lightning tonight in my sleep. So guys, that's the gist of it. That's what's going on with the 1915. I'm excited to drive it more than outside the neighborhood. Like I said, waiting on some parts, waiting on some jets, so I can go ahead and get this thing jetted properly so we can go on a proper ride. And I promise I will take you along on that ride. So, until then, you guys be good, be kind to others, We'll catch you on the next one.